Hello, Malcolm here, and welcome to Tuesday Teaching Tips. Today it's episode 278, and our title is What's in a Word? What's in a Word? What's this all about? Well, I have started recently preparing a teaching and preaching series for the Thames Valley Church and the Watford Church of Christ, which we're going to do in January 2023, and it's 1 Thessalonians. That's what I'm digging into. Very excited about it. I haven't looked at uh, this book in that depth, that, that kind of depth, for a long time. So I'm digging in, studying, and so on. And one of the first things I did was to do a word analysis of First Thessalonians. So I got my uh, Bible software open. I use Accordance, but most Bible software will be able to do this for you. I opened it, First Thessalonians, and I asked it to look at all the words in First Thessalonians and how many words there are and how many are repeated how often. And I found 89 verses. Not that long, is it? First Thessalonians, 89 verses, a total of 1,944 words, of which 895 were different forms of words. So 895 different forms of words. So, of course, when, in looking at the analysis, I excluded all the words like and and but and to and a and the. Forget all those. I was looking for the words that are repeated most often. And the clear and unambiguous focus was God and people. In other words, the God, God and his relationships, as well as the relationships between his people. The most repeated words, let me tell you this. So the most repeated words were God came up 35 times and God's as in possessive seven times. So that's God mentioned a total of 42 times, which is a lot, isn't it? In one short book. Lord and Lords came up, as in the possessive of Lord, came up 22, 20, uh, 24 times. Jesus and the Son, so I've put those two together, Jesus and the Son, they are uh, mentioned 17 times. Sisters are mentioned 15 times. Brothers, 13 times. And Christ, 10 times. If you put Christ, Jesus and Son together, you'll get uh, 27 so those were the most repeated words. God, Lord, Christ, Jesus, Son, sisters, brothers. It's about God and about people, about relationships. This is the focus of First Thessalonians. After that, we got words like faith mentioned eight times, love and being loved mentioned a total of 11 times, and gospel, interestingly, mentioned six times. And all other words were less than that. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, I don't yet know exactly what that's telling me in detail for First Thessalonians, so I'm going to carry on studying it. But the thing that st stood out to me at the beginning there, having done that, was I need to pay attention to every time God is mentioned, every time Jesus is mentioned, every time brother or sister is mentioned. This is what Paul emphasized in this epistle. He emphasized God and people, relationships. This is what matters most in this epistle. Different epistles will have slightly different focuses, but it did strike me that it made me think about how much in my lessons, my writing, my podcasts, my YouTube videos, my sermons and all that, how much do I prioritize talking about God and people as opposed to concepts and ideas? I mean, what about your lessons? a family group lesson, a discussion, a, a, a sermon at church or a communion or anything like that. Our, if you like, our epistles, our lessons, our podcasts and so on. What are the most repeated words? And why are those the most repeated words? Have you done any analysis of your most recent lesson or lessons? Why not get a video or an audio recording of something you did and if you don't have anything, then record the next time you share something, a communion, a, a Bible discussion, or whatever. Why not do that and count the most repeated words? What's the word you use most often? And see what you find. And perhaps you might want to look at particular words like God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. How often do you use those words in times when you're instructing others or leading others in learning? I think it's fascinating. I wonder what you find when you do that. Uh, the Apostle Paul's focus was very clear here in First Thessalonians, and I hope when I teach it that I do justice to that because it certainly deserves that. Let me know what you think and what you find. 
it, I would be fascinated to find out what you discover. So you can leave a message uh, either wherever you hear or see this recording. You can leave a message on the website, malcolmcox.org, or you can email me, malcolm at malcolmcox.org. I'd love to know what you think. Leave, a, leave your message wherever we can see it, uh, all of us, because we learn best when we're learning in community. If you'd like uh, a copy of my ebook on uh, how to how God grows his people, then sign up for my newsletter at the website. If you've got any questions about Bible stuff, then do send me an email to the aforementioned email address. If you know anybody that might benefit from this, please pass the link on. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave a review if you like. And I do hope that as you think about preparing your next lessons, you'll be thinking about the words you use. What's in a word? A whole universe can be in a word. Till the next time, keep calm and carry on teaching. Take care and God bless.